If you could travel back to when dinosaurs first appeared, you'd witness a world completely different from our own. It's hard to imagine that these incredible creatures dominated Earth for over 165 million years, while we humans have only been around for about 350,000 years. That's like comparing 24 hours to just 8 seconds. When dinosaurs first emerged during the late Triassic period around 230 million years ago, our planet was a strange and alien place. The continents were fused together in a supercontinent called Pangaea, creating vast inland areas with extreme seasonal changes. The air had more oxygen than today, and the climate was generally warmer with no polar ice caps. But what exactly would you see if you could visit this ancient world? What were the first dinosaurs actually like? They weren't the massive beasts we typically picture when thinking about dinosaurs. The earliest dinosaurs were relatively small, fast, and nothing like the giants that would come later. One of the oldest known dinosaurs was Eoraptor, a creature about the size of a medium dog. It measured roughly 3 feet long and stood only about 1 foot tall at the hip. Despite its small size, Eoraptor was a significant evolutionary step. Its name means, Don Thief, and it lived about 230 million years ago in what is now Argentina. If you saw one, you might mistake it for a weird lizard at first glance. It walked on two legs, had a long tail for balance, and small arms with five fingers. Unlike the specialized teeth of later dinosaurs, Eoraptor had different types of teeth, suggesting it ate both plants and meat, an omnivore that could adapt to whatever food was available. Another early dinosaur was Herrerasaurus, slightly larger at about 10 to 20 feet long. This predator had a unique jaw that could slide forward to grab prey, and serrated teeth perfect for tearing flesh. It was one of the top predators of its time, with powerful hind legs that made it a fast runner. What's fascinating is that Herrerasaurus shows some features that would become standard in later dinosaurs, but also retain primitive characteristics, making it a kind of evolutionary transition model. These early dinosaurs weren't alone, though. They shared their world with creatures that would seem bizarre to us today. The landscape was dominated by reptiles called pseudosuchians, relatives of modern crocodiles but much more diverse. Some walked on two legs, others had armor plating, and many were the top predators of their ecosystems. One of the most impressive was Postosuchus, a massive predator that could reach lengths of up to 13 feet. Though not a dinosaur, this crocodile relative walked on two legs with its body held horizontal, had powerful jaws filled with serrated teeth, and was likely the apex predator in its environment. If you encountered one, you'd probably mistake it for a dinosaur at first glance. The early dinosaur world also included creatures like Placerias, a hippo-sized herbivore that looked something like a cross between a rhinoceros and a turtle, without the shell. These dicynodonts were actually more closely related to mammals than to reptiles, with tusks and a beak-like mouth for cropping vegetation. Then there were the cynodonts, our own distant ancestors. These small, furry creatures were proto-mammals that eventually gave rise to all modern mammals. They lived in the shadows of the larger reptiles, many being nocturnal and feeding on insects and small prey. The plant life would look alien too. There were no flowers, grasses, or deciduous trees. Instead, the landscape was covered with ferns, cycads, ginkgos, and conifers. The world was greener near water sources but could be quite barren in inland areas where seasonal droughts were common. What's really interesting is that dinosaurs didn't immediately take over when they appeared. For millions of years after dinosaurs evolved, they remained relatively rare components of their ecosystems. They lived alongside many other types of reptiles and protomammals, gradually becoming more diverse and abundant. The earliest dinosaurs also weren't that different from some of their contemporaries. In fact, if you were dropped into the late Triassic, you might have trouble identifying which animals were actually dinosaurs without close examination of their hip structure and other skeletal features that paleontologists used to classify them. One of the most distinctive early dinosaurs was Coelophysis, which lived around 215 million years ago. About 6 to 10 feet long but weighing only about 50 pounds, Coelophysis was slender and agile with hollow bones, a feature that would become common in later dinosaurs and eventually birds. Fossil evidence shows that large groups of these dinosaurs died together, suggesting they may have lived and hunted in packs. They had long necks, narrow skulls, and sharp teeth perfect for catching small prey. If you were to travel even further back, 
before true dinosaurs evolved, you'd meet their immediate ancestors, animals called dinosaur morphs. These creatures had many dinosaur-like features but lacked some of the defining characteristics of true dinosaurs. One example is Legosicus, a small, lightweight animal that ran on its hind legs. These transitional forms show how dinosaurs didn't just appear suddenly but evolved gradually from earlier reptiles. What's fascinating about the early dinosaur world is how different the food chain was compared to later periods. During the late Triassic, dinosaurs weren't the dominant animals. The top predators were often crocodile relatives like Pustosuchus or large amphibians. The massive plant eaters weren't dinosaurs either, but creatures like the rhino sized Placerias. The first true giant dinosaurs didn't appear until the early Jurassic period, after many competing reptile groups went extinct during the Triassic Jurassic extinction event about 201 million years ago. This mass extinction wiped out many of the Pseudosuchians and other reptiles that had been keeping dinosaurs in check, opening up ecological niches that dinosaurs quickly filled. One of the earliest truly large dinosaurs was Platyosaurus, a long-necked plant eater that could reach lengths of 25 feet and weigh over a ton. This early sauropodomorph appeared near the end of the Triassic and represents the beginning of the trend toward gigantism that would produce the truly massive dinosaurs of later periods. By the early Jurassic, about 200 million years ago, dinosaurs were becoming the dominant land animals. Creatures like Dilophosaurus, a 20-foot predator with two thin crests on its skull, roamed North America. Despite what Jurassic Park showed, there's no evidence it had a neck frill or spit venom, that was Hollywood fiction. The real animal was impressive enough, with long, powerful legs and strong jaws filled with sharp teeth. Another early Jurassic dinosaur was Anchisaurus, one of the first sauropodomorphs in North America. Though small compared to later sauropods at just 6-8 feet long, it showed the beginnings of the body plan that would eventually produce the largest land animals ever to walk the Earth. As the Jurassic progressed, dinosaurs grew larger and more diverse. By the middle Jurassic, about 170 million years ago, we start to see truly massive sauropods like Cetiosaurus, which could reach lengths of 60 feet or more. Predators grew larger too, with megalosaurs like Megalosaurus reaching lengths of 30 feet, with massive skulls and blade-like teeth. The diversity of dinosaurs exploded during this time. We see the first stegosaurs with their distinctive back plates, early ankylosaurs with their armor plating, and a variety of carnivores and herbivores filling every available niche. What's important to understand is that dinosaurs didn't achieve their iconic forms overnight. The earliest dinosaurs were relatively simple in form compared to their later relatives. There were no T-Rexes, Triceratops, or Brachiosaurus in the beginning. These famous dinosaurs appeared much later, after over 100 million years of evolution and diversification. The first feathered dinosaurs likely appeared in the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous, though simple feather-like structures may have been present even in some of the earliest dinosaurs. The evolution of feathers was a gradual process, starting with simple filaments for insulation and eventually developing into the complex flight feathers we see in modern birds. If you could witness the dawn of the dinosaurs, you'd see a world in transition. The massive extinction at the end of the Permian period had reset the board, creating opportunities for new groups to rise. The ancestors of dinosaurs were among those that survived and began to diversify. The story of dinosaur origins reminds us that evolution isn't a ladder with a predetermined top, but rather a branching bush. Dinosaurs weren't better than the animals they eventually outcompeted, they just had adaptations that proved advantageous in the changing world of the late Triassic and early Jurassic. It's also worth noting that while dinosaurs eventually became the dominant land animals, they weren't the only success story. Crocodilians, turtles, mammals, and many other groups also survived and found their own niches. The age of dinosaurs wasn't just about dinosaurs, it was a complex ecosystem with many players. When we look at the earliest dinosaurs, we're seeing the humble beginnings of what would become one of the most successful groups of animals ever to live on Earth. From small, fast-running predators like Eoraptor, dinosaurs would eventually evolve into everything from the massive Argentinosaurus, which may have weighed over 70 tons, to the tiny Microraptor with its four wings. The story of dinosaur origins is a reminder of how extraordinary evolutionary history truly is. These creatures didn't appear fully formed but evolved gradually from earlier reptiles. 
their rise to dominance wasn't immediate but took millions of years. And their diversity didn't come all at once but developed over time as they adapted to fill countless ecological niches. So the next time you imagine the age of dinosaurs, remember that it wasn't just a static period where giant beasts roamed. It was a dynamic, changing world that lasted far longer than humans have existed. The earliest dinosaurs would have seemed almost unimpressive compared to what they would become, but they contained the evolutionary potential that would eventually produce some of the most amazing creatures ever to walk the earth.